On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about heel pain, we talk about a yearly movement assessment, and we talk about patellofemoral pain from running too much. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I'm here at Champion PT and Performance up in Boston with Lenny McCrina, Dave Tilly. We got the PT crew here um, at, uh, at Champion here answering some of your questions. Uh, go to MikeReynolds.com. You can click on the podcast link and uh, ask us some questions in the future. Um, be sure to sign up for our email list so that way um, you'll, be, you'll be getting notifications anytime we release a new podcast or blog article, any of that cool stuff. So anyway. Without further ado, still don't have still a student. No student. Still no student. He no so. showed. No showed. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna ask questions again, but we thought we'd play like a little spin the bottle with uh, with the computer. So whoever it whoever it points towards, we'll see has to ask the questions. This Ready? Break by Mike. Go. 100%. If you drive. Oh, oh that's Lenny. fun to his Lenny. That was a, that was a that terrible. Was easy. That's price is right. It didn't go all the way around. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I think it's going to be you every time. Just okay. that's, that's all it is. I haven't read any of these. This is all new to me. All right. All episode. Right. Episode. 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 So, Kenneth from Houston. <laughs> Hello, Kenneth. <laughs> what are your opinions on SMFR, mainly lacrosse ball or golf ball, for plantar fasciitis <laughs> and or heel pain? Lenny, do you know what Self has, SMFR is? Self-myofascial <laughs> release. Very strong here. All right. So, so what was it? So what are your opinions on self-myofascial release, lacrosse ball or golf ball? Ball for plantar fasciitis and or heel pain. I'd never do it. I would use a baseball. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> no. um, all right, so for plantar fasciitis and heel pain, self myofascial release. Dave? Uh, one part of a larger equation. Well, wow. Nailed it. So, nailed good it. for whatever, you know, I think the mechanisms for myofascial release are still being learned and we don't think it's doing what we think we're doing, especially in a big old... <laughs> we have to preface this conversation yeah, yeah. Every I would release time the fascia <laughs> yeah. in the a lot of, neck. A lot of stuff <laughs> down there in the foot. But uh, usually it can help to release some pain, but there's so many other things that could contribute to yeah. why you have plantar fasciitis. We call it yeah. myofascial release. We're really probably not releasing yeah. fascia, FYI. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sick, I'm sick of talking about this. But, <laughs> right, exactly. For those that uh, think yeah. that we are describing that as a fascial release type thing. I mean... Who knows, but if it makes them feel better and allows them to walk, and then you go after calf, then you go after yeah. the mechanism, and then <laughs> he's Italian guy. Hey, 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 come on. Uh, then yeah, I, I'm so sure. Yes. <laughs> he's like goggles. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, so taking a step back, and let's not keep talking about fascia. Um, so soft tissue on there. I, I, if your heel hurts and you're doing soft tissue on your heel, you know you're probably barking up the wrong tree. You've got to figure out why your heel hurts. Uh, and like Dave said, very small piece of the puzzle I'm sure is is actually rubbing the spot that hurts mm. so you may have joint restrictions you may have soft tissue restrictions you may have issues elsewhere like your you know your calf your soleus you know, you know. Have stuff in terminal so, running yeah ab absolutely exactly yeah it could be biomechanical with the way you do things you're up to 18 miles running for so, a marathon right. and so, they just yeah. shoes on and went right. for a run right, right. yeah R rubbing it more is just going to make it worse yeah. you know so um, so I, I'm a fan and and when somebody has uh, heel pain we we do uh, plantar fascia self myofascial release but even there we we would we would have them do the whole calf probably the whole posterior chain um, you know not just that at home we wouldn't just do that we would kind of do the whole thing then work on mobility then work on some corrective exercises then work on some of their alignment issues or whatever it is yeah. like you know we put it all together so uh, piece of the puzzle but um, you know an appropriate piece of the puzzle sure. right yeah, good all right beautiful next question is Deborah from Chapel Hill what is your opinion on the APTA's recommendation for a yearly PT checkup? If you had the opportunity to do an exam on all desk workers in America, what would you screen them for and how? Would you recommend any corrective exercises for persons who work at a desk even without any screening? Without the screen. All right. So, um, love it. I think the APTA should be doing that. I think. Um, I, feel I like, like the dental. Yeah. Seventy yeah. six months. So yeah. yeah. Well, as needed. But yeah. yes. They do the, something. Yeah. My um, my five year old uh, when she was five had a cavity filled. 
I don't know if there's any dentist watching right now, but that's our baby teeth, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I was like shocked by that, but yeah. So the dentist did a great job, probably what, like three decades ago or something, like 30, 40 years ago. All of a sudden, with this huge campaign that we need to get our teeth cleaned twice a year, you know, and, and yeah, I think that's 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 great. Um, they didn't. We all just assume that's like that. I think the APTA could probably do the same thing if if they tried and they put the resources to it. Is that you need a, a yearly movement screen? I think that's way more important than dentistry but I mean I could be I don't know, perhaps I'm biased you know but but having somebody check out your you know your postural adaptations like those types of things like every year is, is probably the way to go so um, definitely on board with that and that's something we kind of preach here a little bit we have a lot of our clients kind of do that here at champion so um, that's not completely unfamiliar to us I guess mm -hmm. um, so uh, what, what would you look at I guess correct I mean obviously there it's the, super <laughs> I mean, it's so hard. It's like so broad of a category. Like yeah. everybody's different. I mean, yes, you sit at a desk, but everybody has different adaptations. Everyone has different sports, different right. injury injury history. Well, she's yeah. talking specific about desk work. Right, but even everyone that sits at a desk, they all have different lives. So you have a couple of low hanging fruit. Probably. Some chairs have arms. Some chairs don't <laughs> yeah. have arms. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I would say, like, you can, yeah, everybody. You different. can blanket some stuff and probably assume, but you right. have to do standing a standing stretch, screen, you know? cervical spine, right. you know, thoracic spine. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the obvious. Uh, yeah, the obvious. You can use a system system-based thing like the SFMA mm -hmm. if you want like and, and kind of you know go through something in that fashion that's fine um, yeah but you then asked in the last part is what would you do without a screen right. I think you can certainly do things without a screen so you know we call it reverse posturing right so if you're stuck like this all the time you can certainly give somebody correctives to reverse their posture and work on some thoracic extension some retraction of their shoulders yeah, yeah, up the ceiling and yeah, exactly stuff with their head stuff with their their pelvic tilt uh, stuff with their flexibility on their uh, posterior chain, right? Because their hamstrings are going to get tight. You know those types of things. So um, there's definitely some blanket things. Just take whatever activity it is. So Dave does it with gymnasts. We do it with baseball. We do it with a bunch of other sports. But you take their activity and you reverse hack it, right? So mm -hmm. just reverse hack sitting and do the exact opposite. <laughs> you know. So um, also people that stand all day and they need the opposite. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to sit. Yeah. So I know once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Chris from Brooklyn. I kind of want to read it in a Brooklyn accent, but that's, I'm not going to. Yeah, that seems like a bad idea. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know that differential diagnosis is important for discovering patellofemoral pain. My MRI shows patella thickening. Good. <laughs> Infra, infrapatella bursa inflammation. Yeah, <laughs> patella inflammation, as well as having Osgood-Schlatter and quadriceps tendonitis. Nice. No, no question, I did this running six to eight miles a day on pavement without breaks and pushing through discomfort. Is there a way back to full knee strength? What's the best place to start? That's a no-brainer right there. Learning. So your knee's a mess, and you run six to eight miles every day. I don't think, uh, I think the, the, the low hanging fruit here Volume on the easy one here is you got, you got to pump the brakes, you know, so it's probably not what you want to hear. Like you want to just, you want like a magic trick, like an exercise or something to get, to get your knee back to full function, but uh, your volume's beating up your knee joint. So everything is, is just an overload. So we have this conversation with athletes all the time. You know, we, we say, well, it must be, you know, overuse. And they're like, wow, now I'm barely doing this. I'm barely playing a game. Well, we're like, no, no, no. It's not like X amount of games or I'm doing the same as Dave. Your body is telling you you're overusing it. It doesn't. It could have been one game. It could have been 100 games. If your knee is all inflamed, you overdid it. So for you, this is overuse. So the, the, the most important thing you need to do for your knee is figure out your volume. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. And then in terms of like getting your knee strength back, you're never going to get it back until you solve this issue, right? So an inflamed knee is always going to be inflamed. you gotta, you got to stop beating your knee up and not try to fix it. you got to stop breaking it versus trying to fix it. I agree. Pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. We'll get it in. And then obviously have somebody <laughs> check you out and figure out like the proximal aspects. Like. That's the, the whole second. Yeah, the whole secondary thing with you is you need a de probably a detailed screen and figure out proximal why this volume is breaking up. Yeah. Right. Like every so I I can should run be able to run six to eight miles. People do it all the time. People run more than that. Right. But for you specifically, why is it making your knee? Why is it beating cranky? you up? That's step two. Step one. Yeah. Calm it down. Step two, figure out why you're getting into this mess. Right. Um, and that, I think you just need a detailed assessment and, and program. Remember, running is a skill. I think people forget that. <sighs> yeah, I, 
I still Chris Johnson's famous for that. Like, nice day, grab my shoes, let's go for it. Right? It's like, well, you don't run correctly. Um, Skill I don't have. It, I drive down Starro. I'm seeing everybody jogging on the Charles River. It's beautiful right. out in Boston, and I think 90% of those people probably shouldn't be running. Right. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I'm off, but man, there's a lot of bad technique out there. But all right, that's all we have. That three, Thank awesome. You. Thank you guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for all the great questions. Again, go to MikeReynolds.com. Sign up for our email uh, list so that way you can get notifications when these episodes come out and all of our other articles and fun stuff like that. And be sure to join us on iTunes. Give us a nice rating and subscribe. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks so much.